So I'm going to be talking about smart plants, I suppose. <laughs> this is the smart group. Um, I'm going to start with a slide uh, of my hometown, New York, um, a vision of a visualization by Boyer and Sanderson on the left uh, in 1609, and today in Manhattan, uh, 2008. The inhabitants of Manhattan in 1600 uh, supplied all of their transportation and uh, energy requirements through muscle and wood. Uh, today, this, the bonfire grows as we require over 11,000 megawatts per day to satisfy our requirements for energy. But the roots of this issue actually start with the smoke um, in the middle of Manhattan. Because the way that we organize ourselves as a material society today, including the morphology of our buildings and our cities, are at the root of fire burning technologies. That is, high concentrated forms of energy um, with, with which we, we drive our mechanical systems and, and, and our other um, uh, climate control systems within buildings. And essentially, what you know, if, if that light pollution map that you just saw does not even include now emerging um, uh, uh, conditions such as uh, subterranean farming here in, in Tokyo, um, it's, it's certain that our, our, the future of our cities will not look uh, the way they do today. And the question is, what will be our relationship, the, the, the so-called built ecologies or the relationship between natural flows um, and, uh, and, and, and built systems? Certainly, it will be very different. And what I, I'd like to um, propose today is that through um, a kind of evolution of biomechanical hybrids, there's a way that that, that we will actually be um, reforming our cities. We have this is another um, view of, of Manhattan, looking at the the sort of carcass of uh, of the old city, and we have an emerging tolerance for uh, this this hybrid uh, lack of separation between built and natural systems emerging. Uh, this is an example in Paris, um, but the, um, uh, ultimately these are passive systems. What I'm going to propose today is the use of active systems or pushing the performance of natural systems through the, 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 um, the association with mechanical and smart systems. Here is an urban farm in Paris, a, a kind of um, vertical hydroponics uh, farm, and yet um, we can see that its, its uh, usefulness and its integration into the building systems is somewhat limited um, due to the fact that the, um, the actual morphology of the building and the building systems are not synergistic actually with uh, the, the biotic systems. Um, and yet, if we were even to um, integrate these kinds of systems throughout our cities, say to cover all of the surfaces here, all of the surfaces in vertical urban farms or in, um, in uh, green rooftops, we would do enormous things uh, for our water table that was mentioned just recently. Um, we, 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 we would absorb um, uh, an enormous amount of, um, of, of useful um, uh, natural flows, the thermodynamics of our cities would be very different, and in fact we would capitalize on all of this extra surface area. However, this is probably not even enough in order to address um, the actual uh, condition that we, we, in terms of distributed flows of energy that we have created within our cities. Um, as I mentioned, we've, uh, we have concentrated forms of energy that drive all of our systems at multiple scales, and they in turn create a thermodynamics um, that, that um, contribute to urban heat island effect and the fact that we are producing way too much heat um, a, a, that is actually low grade heat that is not usable um, um, in terms of being recycled back into um, our city systems. So the proposition is actually that we would have um, we would deal or, or look at um, natural systems in a very different way than we have previously. That the idea of um, merging built structures with natural systems and, and with the, the logic of natural systems could actually um, lead us towards a very different um, performances. Here is a visualization of a wall. Um, it is 10,000 square feet in, in, a, in a large um, uh, uh, commercial building in suburban New York that will supply all of the um, fresh air requirements from the interior of the building, um, through, and, and this is the transfer of technology that was developed by NASA for closed loop ecologies um, to amplify the air cleaning capacity of, of plants by 200 to 300 times by blowing the air through the, through the root rhizomes and allowing the, the microbes within the root rhizomes to digest the toxins. So we can actually produce oxygen, oxygen from within a building. This has enormous implications uh, for our, our, the way that um, we actually metabolize energy on buildings and also uh, for the type of 
um, environments that we, we, we bring. It also has tremendous impl impl implications for um, the types of materials that we use um, and the way that we look at um, so-called industrial e e um, ecological uh, concepts in terms of the life cycle of the materials. Here is um, a generation of, uh, of, of a, a, a prototype that is dealing with um, uh, post-agricultural waste and this kind of dissolution of materials um, uh, that would be timed in association with uh, the life cycle of, of, of the actual system. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh